Ignatian Retreat Day 14 The Resurrection As we almost reached the end of this uh, retreat we talk about the last episodes in the gospel the resurrection narrative before the ascension Resurrection narrative are present in all the four gospels and we will discuss some of them here in a little detail The empty tomb incident is mentioned in Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 to 12, Mark 16 verses 1 to 8, Luke 24 verses 1 to 12, John 20 verses 19 to 23. John 20 verses 31 to 32 says that Jesus performed many signs in the presence of the disciples which are not recorded in these books, but these are recorded that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. and that by believing you may have life in his name and john 21 24 says this is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things and we know that his testimony is true so the basic point here is that we need to have a resurrection experience all the writings fall short we need to have a experience of the risen lord in order to proclaim it to the world Resurrection of Christ implies he never dies. He comes back to life after death. He becomes immortal. John 20 verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, "Peace be with you." When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you withhold the forgiveness from any one, it is withheld. In the Gospel of John the resurrection and the Pentecost take place on the same day and not on different days as in the other gospels The disciples are gathered in a room which is larger than a room for the 12 because there are women and other people The doors are closed because of fear their leader Jesus is killed But Jesus comes in through the closed doors because now he is the risen Lord he, he cannot have any hindrances John 20:19 The doors of the house with the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Let us examine our own lives and take it to the Lord in prayer. Am I still afraid? What is it that frightens me and why? Is fear not connected with lack of faith? What prevents me from trusting God? Are doors of my heart open or closed? If closed, what prevents me from opening them? Peace is wholeness. Am I separated, dichotomized? Let us examine our life, journal our answers and take them to the Lord in prayer and allow Him to heal us from our fears and give us more faith. John 20, 20 Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord because His peace, His wholeness made them complete. It is a gift for all aspects of their lives. He showed them His hands, His side. that is a continuity from the uh, burial to the now the risen lord they are emotional but it is a genuine emotion the disciples then are not afraid because they have seen now the risen lord they are delighted and rejoice and the lord does not greet them but gives them peace and shalom how real is my experience of resurrection How do you make it tangible in your life? Let us take it to the Lord in prayer and ask him to make his presence as a risen Lord real to us and tangible to us. John 20 22 When he has said this he breathed on them received the holy spirit. In the book of Genesis God breathed his spirit into Adam and man was created. In the same way Jesus now breathes on them the Holy Spirit the comforter and gives them Holy Spirit for a mission for a responsibility and commissions them to go out to the world How do you feel about your breath as a gift of God have you ever thought 
of your breath as a gift let us ponder on this and take it to the lord in prayer john 2023 if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven if you retain the sins of any they are retained our sins are forgiven or held back not forgiven this is addressed to a larger group it is not meant only in the context of a priest and absolution our life is a mirror that people look at us our calmness our presence of god and they get inspired to transform their life a metanoia is created for them we become the light of the world the salt of the earth who am i after i encounter the risen lord my life is transformed and it is a challenge for me to transform the lives of others let us examine today in prayer have others been drawn to jesus because of me or in spite of me let us take it to the lord in prayer and ask him to remove all the loopholes and the defects of our witness and allow us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth the second narrative which we'll be discussing is from the gospel of mark chapter 16 verses 1 to 8 when the sabbath was over mary magdalene mary the mother of james and salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint jesus's body very early on the first day of the week just after sunrise they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb but when they looked up they saw that the stone which was very large had been rolled away as they entered the tomb they saw a young man dressed in white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed don't be alarmed he said you are looking for jesus the nazarene who was crucified he has risen he is not here see the place where they laid him and go tell his disciples and peter he is going ahead of you into galilee there you will see him just as he told you trembling and bewildered the women went out and fled from the tomb they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid these women who are in a hurry want to anoint the body of christ but they have faith they believe without seeing the huge stone is not a blockage for them the empty tomb and the angels who direct them where to go and find the lord that he is going back to galilee the place where the mission had begun these women they are now going to tell the others to follow him to galilee mark's version of the story ends very abruptly it means now you go also and proclaim the risen lord do you look for jesus only in the negative situations in the empty tomb of your life and not in the positive then you need to look for him also in the joyful events of your life now we take the third narrative from the gospel of john chapter 20 verses 11 to 18 but mary stood weeping outside the tomb and she wept she stooped to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of jesus had lain one at the head and one at the feet they said to her woman why are you weeping she said to them They have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, "Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking?" Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, "Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away." Jesus said to her, "Mary." She turned and said to him in Aramaic, "Rabboni," which means teacher. Jesus said to her do not cling to me for i have not yet ascended to the father but go to my brothers and say to them i am ascending to my father and your father to my god and your god mary magdalene went and announced to the disciples i have seen the lord and that he had said these things to her when we examine this story mary magdalene goes uh, alone to the empty tomb and tells the disciples peter and the other disciple who had gone earlier to see but she goes and she weeps it is for self pity it is the i the ego which is hurt my lord she is very possessive of her god she has so many attachments but can we be possessive of god and sorrow blinds her even though she can see the angels in front of her yet they are asking her the question why are you weeping she makes no response she just points to the situation and only the uh, assumption she has is somebody has stolen the body of her lord she cannot go beyond the 
judgment that she has in her mind because she's stuck in her grief and as she's speaking jesus is standing by her yet she cannot see him and she thinks he's a gardener all people become like objects because she's craving for a dead jesus her low expectation jesus's life was always misunderstood now even his person is misunderstood he only asking her two questions woman why are you weeping and secondly whom are you looking for the same question was asked by jesus to his parents in the temple at the age of 12 we need have one desire which can be very dangerous and blocks us and blinds us so therefore jesus said do not cling to me and get used to my presence in this way now i am a risen lord i am in a new form i'll be ascending and i will go to my father and your father so she is made the apostle of the apostles and she is told to proclaim the risen lord to all the brothers and sisters let us examine our life am i possessive with god do i have any attachments which keep me from experiencing the fullness of love in god an attachment to some idea of god an attachment to a particular way of seeing god does sorrow blind me or my trials and difficulties blind me and keep me in my martyr complex and i cannot see god fully let us examine in prayer and ask the lord to help us to be free from our blindness and attachments points for reflection it does not matter if you fail make mistake and learn to rise up never give up the lord who has called you will sustain you keep going on keeping on saying yes god's will be done god speaks in the stillness listen to him do your best even if 75% of the effort is waste 25% will be gain keep on sowing make a resolution the temptation of saying but is always there give god a chance to transform you and do your daily examine in prayer love is a mutual communication angels and saints are our intercessors interior knowledge of all graces is given unto you offering of all gifts to god god is in all creation and in me god labors for me in everything everything comes from god contemplation is to obtain love love is deeds not only words in desperate situation like the apostle at emmaus do not make any decisions but go back to your starting point that is jerusalem and then take your decision god is unconditional love and faithfulness forget your past and press on towards the goal let us invoke our blessed mother and ask for her intercession to be a perfect disciple Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus Holy Mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen all glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen